Hello, this is Ken, your podcast preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. I hope and pray that you exude Christ-like greatness, so much so that an e-Bible breaks out in any and all that you set out to do today in the name of Jesus. And so yes, for those of you that have been my super loyal, I want to be Christ-like in every way listeners. And after completing my 205th podcast message, I have decided to change up my podcast intro and introduce myself as a podcast preacher. I also included a little prayer as I want you to truly experience what it is like to enter into the God space in your lifetime on the spinning rock. The title of this message is Get Off Your High Horse. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode three of five. I saw on Facebook a bit ago how someone was defending their position on the Trinity of God, and that if you didn't believe it, you were not to make any comments, otherwise they would unfriend you faster than, well, I guess their tongue full of error. I say this not because of the position they take on God, but because of their defensive position that surely declares that they, somewhere along the line, made up their minds to no longer grow in God. Yes, the individual that takes the permanent position that they believe this and this and such and such, and please don't bother to provide me any new revelation because, well, they have some issues, and unity isn't one of them. They, of course, wouldn't speak this out loud, as even the Pharisees knew that if they questioned Jesus and his teachings, they needed to do it in the privacy of their own spiritual arrogance or ignorance, or both. And they did this mostly in private until they felt like they had enough lies to convince the swarm of religious know-it-all flies that he was not who he proved he was. Now, I'm not a proponent that if you want to say something stupid on social media platform, then by all means let your dim-witted light so shine before men that they might stumble as much as you do, but only, of course, if they believe you. However, as you have seen me do in some cases, especially when I come across an ignorant religious believer who openly attacks those of their own faith. Yes, one who has the same belief and is also authentically born-again believer with the seed of God embedded in his very life. Correct them if they are willing and open to receive it. No, no, no. This is poison Christianity, they say. In my own life, I have believed certain things that the Bible stated. To the point I made enemies of those who were also believers and contradicted my ignorance. I was immovable on what I believed because, well, it was what I believed. And if I believed it, then I just knew that God wouldn't have changed a specific scripture meaning for someone else. Not even a Job, would he? After a lifetime of trials, testings, and persecution from both those who believe that they are believers and from authentically born-again believers meaning well and from the devil's own children hiding out in the very church as I attended. I have come to know that the Bible, without a doubt, is an infinitely multi-layered book that is only understood when the Holy Spirit gives us the revelation of its specific meaning in a specific season and or a specific issue in our lives. Specifically. And if that is not specific enough, then let me just say it is an infinitely well-written book that is most complex and alive. So let's do our best not to lock into a scripture and make it the law for everyone forever. Believe it or not, there was a time when people actually believed this planet was flat. Let's look at the manifold or multi-layered God, and then who it is that teaches us today. Nehemiah 19.9 Yet in your manifold mercies you did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud did not depart from them by day, to lead them on the road, nor did the pillar of fire by night, to show them light, and the way they should go. Look, a floating flashlight was their guide. Nope, they were being led by his majesty and most high, who sits on the throne of thrones, watching over and managing the affairs of everything he created, as it rests in the palm of his hand. And in the other hand is a giant hairball, because no one's hair is unaccounted for in all of history. Matthew 10.30 So let's go to Psalms 104.24. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. Ephesians 3.10 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. 
1 Peter 4.10 As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Does this refocus us not just a little? I mean, how manifold is manifold? Well, say hello to my little friend Decom. Manifold, of many kinds, numerous and varied, having numerous different parts, elements, features, forms, etc. Now, unless you have caught up with God, we all be in the same place, which is to try to understand, listen to, and get to know God, period. If you are not, then you are not a believer, and this message cannot possibly speak to you in a way that will help. Now, if you are in the believing, that is, that you are inquiring about God because your season is now, then it is, in fact, a message for you. Matthew 10, 24, 25. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Oh, some will call you the devil for teaching the truth. But that is okay because this message is putting the devil on notice. That we notice him and resist him back and away from the open hearts and ears that will be receiving this message. Something else about this scripture, it actually reveals the opposite, which is that a lot of people are not being discipled. In part because they don't want to be discipled. Because if they are discipled, then they can't rise above whoever it is that's discipling them. It is a spirit of pride. You should be being discipled as a believer, no matter how long you've been a believer. Somebody should be able to speak into your life and help you grow, not just God. Now, if you're a student, then keep in mind you cannot accelerate past your current teacher. You must be led to another teacher who is operating at a higher level than your existing teacher. But buyer beware, if your teacher is also growing, then one is sufficient for your life. Going because you got offended at correction is a bad move and will set you back in your own growth. Now, it may be necessary to get you to the place where you can begin to grow again. So I wouldn't say it shouldn't happen. Even Peter was turned over to Satan to shake it out of him. Luke 22:31. So let's see what Matthew 22:33 says. And when the multitudes heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Mark 1:22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Mark 11:18. And the scribes and chief priests heard it, and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. Matthew 7:28. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching. Is anyone astonished at your teaching when you teach? Or are they all offended? I have to ask this even of my own messages. But so that we are consistent, let's go again to DCOM. Astonished. To fill with sudden and overpowering surprise or wonder. Amaze. Easy humor and keen intellect astonished me. So when power followed the preaching of Jesus, that was an astonishment and a confirmation that Jesus wasn't like the Pharisees who didn't operate in anointing, didn't operate in power. They were just following the law. The Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Little bits of scriptures to help lead us back to who is in charge of the whole church affair and personal development. He is the ultimate life coach. Philippians 2, 12, 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Pride is not a cloak for fear and trembling, nor do I think Paul is saying we should operate in a spirit of fear. As we know, he instructed Timothy to the contrary. 2 Timothy 1.7 But I think we should pay attention to what Peter also stated when he said, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, and add it to what Paul is saying in Philippians. Oh, but wait, let's add what he said in Corinthians to complete the thought. 1 Corinthians 2, 3, 4. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. 
And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So we see its completion. Show me your power that I may know your position in God. Kindred spirits are drawn to each other, not repelled by one another. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep water.